Welcome, Dorothy. Hello. I couldn't get it. My, the light is just bouncing off my glasses in a horrible way. That's so annoying. Um, anyway, here I am. You're I, all set, folks. You're, you're recording and you're open to the public. And Darcy, you're host now. So have okay. a good evening, everyone. Thank you, Tina. Right. Good night. Good evening. Um, seeing as we have a quorum in attendance, I'm calling the November 5th, 2020 meeting of the Town Service and Outreach Committee to order at 6.35. Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee. I will now call on each committee member by name to confirm that you can hear me and we can hear you. Melissa. Yes, I can hear and see you. Darcy, yes. Dorothy. Hello, I'm here. Evan. Yes, can see and George. hear. Same, see and hear. Okay, and we also have the town manager. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay, so those assisting the meeting will be monitoring committee member connections and if necessary, we'll pause the meeting until people are reconnected. We request that everyone be patient with the process. So um, it looks like we don't have any attendees. People agree with that? No, we have no attendees. So um, we do not have any public comment at the moment. Um, action items, we have potentially four uh, town manager appointments, the Design Review Board, the Munson Memorial Library Trustees, the Council on Aging, and the Community Safety Work Group. And I just thought maybe we should have a quick discussion of the community safety work group um, appointments to see whether uh, it's my understanding that we have a memo before us today that recommends six potential members for the for the new community safety work group, but that the town manager is also going to be interviewing one or more people tomorrow um, and is hoping that we can get a recommendation in front of the council at the latest by the uh, November 16th council meeting. So we have two, we have council meeting on two consecutive Mondays coming up. Um, so the question is, whether we should um, just put off the consideration of the members that we have in front of us today until a special meeting. A, do we wanna have a special meeting? Do when, if so, when? And do we want to combine um, all of the recommendations into one meeting? Um, so, if you don't mind, I'll just open that up. Or do you have any suggestions about that, Paul? No, I'm flexible however you want to do it. I, I do have multiple interviews, or the interview team has multiple interviews tomorrow afternoon, and that should wrap it up. But it, you're expecting to interview and decide tomorrow? Yes. So what do people think? I had suggested next Thursday as a possible meeting time, um, but there's something going on starting at six that some of us are involved in. Um, we could eat, or probably meet as early as 4.30. Um, what do you think? Hmm. Uh, well, I'll start off. Um, I have no problem. Looking at your hands here. Okay, I, I haven't, I don't even see where it is yet. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Click on participants. Okay, Dorothy started talking, so go ahead. No. Oh, wait till, till the other people talk first. All right, Alyssa. 
Thank you. I appreciate that, Dorothy. Um, so I would like to go ahead and for a couple of different reasons. One is I would like to bring these recommendations to the town council, which is a posted possibility for us to do on Monday night. So the town council could act on these first six Monday night, assuming we come to agreement on those six tonight, because we never know what's going to happen with a second interview process. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know how long the interview committee is going to decide side need to decide to make a decision. Yes, ideally things will work out great tomorrow, but they may not. And the idea that we would miss the window of doing anything until the 16th feels unfortunate to me. I think that Paul indicated in the memo, I appreciate his flexibility, but I think he indicated in the memo that he was comfortable moving forward with these six, even if we don't find additional candidates. He's not desperate to fill all the seats at this point. That's not the goal here. The goal here is to have the people that need to be on the committee be on the committee. So I would like to see us move forward with the discussion tonight to recommend the six to the town council. If the town council decides on Monday that they're uncomfortable doing that for whatever reason, that's their decision. But we can't, it's not like we can meet tomorrow afternoon or Monday because we won't have time to post a meeting to do the rest of the interviews. And that's even assuming they come to a conclusion on Friday as to what the interview team actually wants. Maybe they'll wanna think about it over the weekend. So I'm more comfortable moving forward with the six and then saying, great, if we add some more people later, terrific. But the six could in fact, if that we act and the town council acts on Monday, they could start to get organized. Thank you, uh, George. Sorry, I agree with Alyssa. Um, we should try and go ahead. We should go ahead tonight um, with the six. Um, I guess we can't, we cannot meet prior to the town council meeting on Monday because of posting requirements. So um, that was the thought I had, but of course that's not gonna work. So um, I say we go ahead tonight with the six. Okay, so, but I also need to hear from people about when would be a good time for a special meeting because we still have to have the special meeting. Um, or, I mean, I suppose we don't have to have a special meeting, but it would be nice. I'm, I'm guessing the committee can't get started until it's fully constituted. That's exactly not true. That's what I just said. They could get started. There's no reason to wait. There is no full constitution. There's six members that are, that he's ready to have go. Well, I don't think that's probably up to us. But um, Evan? Dorothy had her hand up before me if she wants to speak. Oh, I'm sorry, Dorothy. Uh, ditto. And um, I wouldn't mind meeting on uh, 4.30 on November 12th, but I think we should go with what we've got. So ditto to Alyssa and to George. And Evan? I, yeah, I was just going to second, I think. Uh, originally, I thought it would be better maybe to do them as a group, um, because I think when I first read the memo, I sort of read over that the town manager would like to go forward with these, um, and I certainly see no reason not to. Um, as far as a second meeting, we could do an earlier meeting next week. That would make for a long night for some of us, but I also know that um, from my experience with eTech that it, it does even moving quickly, it takes a little bit of time to set up that first meeting because people haven't already blocked out a schedule. So I also feel that there's also a possibility um, that e even if that it doesn't really matter all that much and that if we um, hold off until our next regular meeting, um, it will probably be okay because likely those members would still have an opportunity to join the first meeting since I doubt the first meeting will occur during Thanksgiving week, although who knows. So my preference is to not add additional meetings unless we feel like they are absolutely necessary, which at this point, I don't feel like it is. And this is with the knowledge that the, the council wouldn't be able to act on them until December 7th. Um, Alyssa, you have something to add? 
I'm just a little confused about the, what, how that logistically plays out then if we don't have a second meeting. And so I just want to make sure I, I separate the idea of, and I know we have a difference of opinion on this, but I want to make clear what my separation is, which is that I believe the six, assuming that we approve them and assuming that the town council approves them, should be able to set up their first meeting and get started, irrespective of whether or not there end up being additional members we may or may not need that meeting next week because the interview team may, may or may not decide tomorrow that they have additional people to give us. But I would want the town council to be able to act on Monday the 9th so that this group could get start getting organized and see if they are able to meet as early as sometime next week, well before Thanksgiving and well before the next time the town council could act. Paul, we, could I just ask you, um, do you, are you seeing it as the, it say there was a recommendation that the first six were uh, appointed. Do you see them meeting in advance of the people that you choose tomorrow, perhaps? So I think, I think there's a high likelihood we won't have, I mean, I don't know, I can't. I would like to get this group started. They all have to get sworn in, get, you know, we want them to learn about the open meeting law. Some folks have not um, done all this yet. Uh, we, I would like to try to get a meeting scheduled uh, prior to Thanksgiving and have alerted folks to that. Um, so if we can get these six done tonight and if we get something in advance and do and then do the others on uh, in advance of the, on the 16th council meeting, however you can get a meeting in between there in advance of that, um, yeah, so you're hoping to get them started before Thanksgiving, which would necessitate our having an extra meeting. So uh, are there people who are, um, I, I'm assuming that we should just try to have a meeting next Thursday early if we're available at 4.30 or something. Is there anyone who strongly disagrees with doing that? So maybe we should just go ahead and do that. Uh, George? Just the thought that, that I don't think the meeting would take very long. No. Um, it, would and it, would, it, would enable, it would enable them to meet um, more quickly so that if it's needed, I'd be willing to do it. And we only need three people. I mean, we don't need all five of us. So I understand uh, the concern about extra meetings. And if someone can't make it, it's not the end of the world but three of us should be able to get together and um, review these and uh, allow them to meet before Thanksgiving. Yeah, um, I would just like to say that my preference um, would be to do the whole shebang next Thursday. Um, and part of the reason for that is that we got the memo yesterday and we asked to have it like much in advance of that. So I feel like there's, um, you know, this was a real, this is an important appointment and that there were a lot of people interested in the formation of this committee that don't have any notice whatsoever that this is happening tonight and don't have any way of weighing in or, so I, I actually don't feel like we should be doing it tonight. Um, but if everybody else wants to go forward, that, you know, uh, Dorothy? Yeah, uh, I don't really see people coming to this meeting to say, don't appoint that person. I, I, I don't see that happen. Um, it's when people want need to be given notice, it's usually because there's an issue or an idea or an action that's being discussed. But um, I, I, I wouldn't really want to listen to anybody who came to the meeting to say, don't pick, choose that person, they're a terrible person, because that would be such a, a nasty level of, that I would hate to get to in, into in a small town. So it doesn't bother me that there wasn't a lot of notice that these names would go out. And it was quite a, I don't know the people on the committee, but it, I read through the whole memo today, and it, it seemed it was a pretty thorough affair that, that I'm willing to just put my trust in it. Um, so I'm hearing that we agree that we're going to go forward with this, the recommendations for the six tonight. 
and that we're going to have a meeting next Thursday at 4.30. That is the only purpose of the meeting is to look at the additional applicants. Yes? And what time would that be? Uh, I'm thinking four, uh, it's fine with me to do it at five. Um, should we just do it at five? Fine, whatever's fine with me. Yes. I normally babysit until five. That's perfect for me. Um, okay, so why don't we uh, just start with the community safety work group then? Um, and uh, why don't you start us off, Paul? Great, thank you. Uh, first, I want to uh, recognize the interview team, which was a spectacular interview team. Um, they did not like to share with uh, Dr. Barbara Love, who was really the one who sort of helped co um, organize the discussion. Uh, if you don't know Dr. Love, she was the chair of the Amherst Regional uh, Public School Committee. She's Professor Emeritus of Social Justice Education at UMass and former chair and um, She's always announced herself as a proud retiree, although she's incredibly busy. She, her working around her schedule has been a real challenge, but she had such a huge contribution. Uh, Keisha Dennis from the Residence Advisory Committee, Matthew Charity, Chair of the Human Rights Commission, Alexandra Monison Olson, who was the designee of Defund 413, Sid Ferrara of the Human Rights Commission and the ABC House Resident Director, and Tim Nelson, the Fire Chief. And it was a really terrific committee. Not all, several of them made all the interviews, but some some of them missed some. But they were able. They had, we had some really tr uh, terrific note takers who shared information with each other. So that it was a very strong interview team. The, the six people I'm putting forward uh, tonight are Tashina Bowman, uh, Deborah Ferrara, Pat Anabaku, Brianna Owen, Alicia Walker, and Paul Wiley. And I think this group brings a very strong combination of people who've been in town for a while, a business owner, people who've been involved with education uh, as principal of Crocker Farm School, people who've gone through our Amherst school system, people who have children in our Amherst school system, some um, background in legal um, studies. It's a very well-rounded um, uh, group that has a lot of experience, life experiences and uh, work experiences um, in the community and I'm here to answer any questions. This, I, I'm really excited by this group. I think it's really a, a phenomenal group of people um, that is, is for, this, for this important project. Do we have questions or comments for the town manager? Evan. No questions, just wanted to make a comment because the town manager has endured me over the past two years, consistently asking for more, more, more in these appointment memos um, and information. And I thought that the appointment memo um, was very informative. I really appreciated the profiles you offered for each person. I appreciated that each profile was very clearly tied to, I think, what they bring to this particular committee and what they offer. And so um, I just, because I have often been difficult with those memos, I wanted to offer my thanks and appreciation for this memo, which I found to be very thorough and very informative and very useful in understanding these people um, uh, who you're recommending for appointment. Thank you. Alyssa. Thank you. Two, 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 two. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, sorry. Two devices. Okay. So thank you to Evan. That was terrific. Exactly. We keep asking for more and we're getting to really where we really understand what the logic is behind things. So thank you so much. And the other thing I just wanted to put the plug in for that I'm sure we'll do it town council too, is how much we appreciate that people are taking the time to do this. Mm -hmm. knowing that it's a very unique thing that we're asking people to do. We're asking people to get ready and move really quickly on things with the first deadline coming up in January, and this is November, and there's a global pandemic and people's lives are in chaos and they're willing to contribute to this process. So I thank the interview team, 
the staff involved, including the interview team that served on the interview team and all the applicants, because like we are so fortunate that so many people stepped up. Thank you. Um, I, do, I do have a question about the racial equity task force and whether were they originally part of the interview team and what, what happened there? Uh, they were invited to participate in the um, interview team, but chose not to. Oh, so they, they never were part of the interview team. Right, but interestingly, uh, Pat Anabanku self-described as being a member of the racial equity task force. Oh, cool. Um, okay, other, uh, Alyssa, is that a different hand? We got two Alyssa's and oh, there there goes her hand. Okay, any other um, comments or questions? Um, all right, so um, I guess we're ready for a motion then. Um, I move to recommend that the town council approve the following recommendations by the town manager of persons to serve on the community safety working group for terms that last the length of the working group's efforts. Tanisha Bowman, Deborah Ferreira, Pat Onabaku, Brianna Owen, Alicia Walker, and Paul Wiley. Do I have a second? Second. Second, 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 second. Ooh, second. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. 14 seconds. <laughs> this, this once is enough, Alyssa, please. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, now, roll call vote. And um, I am not going to start with Al Alyssa. Okay. I'll start with me. Yes, Dorothy. I think that was a yes, Dorothy. Yes. Um, Evan. Yes. George. Yes. Alyssa. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So moving on to the um, Council on Aging. Um, Paul, do you want to yes. talk about that? So we have two seats uh, on the Council on Aging. Uh, one, a recent resignation. Um, and that's, that will be for a term that ends on June 30th. And that, uh, that person with appointee is with Chad Fuller. And the other is Myla Montemayor. Um, and um, that would be for a three-year term. So these, um, uh, again, building on um, our community, the, this, um, Mr. Fuller lives in, uh, uh, and housing uh, and is, is, is high util, uses the senior center a lot or used to. Um, and uh, Ms. Montemayor uh, also has was a frequent user and said she's she has signed up for absolutely every um, uh, activity that the senior center has offered. Uh, she also brings a wide range of language um, diversity. Uh, she speaks. Um, English, Filipino, three other Philippine languages, Spanish, German, and Italian, um, and self-describes as an Asian American, which is really uh, something that the senior director has been trying to uh, diversify the council, uh, membership on the council as well. So I think these are two strong additions to the Council on Aging. Excellent. Comments? Okay. Um, I move to recommend to the town council the approval of the following town manager recommendations for appointment to the Council on Aging for three year term expiring June 30th, 2023, Mila Montemayor, and for a one year term expiring June 30th, 2021, Chad Fuller. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, Dorothy. For seconds, I was trying to, I cannot raise my hand in time to second a motion, but I thought that I couldn't second a motion without raising my hand. So that's what all that raising the hands was, was that I was trying to be available to second things. Oh, okay. 
turn off my mic because I, I don't know if I need to, but often in the past, it's been better if people turned off their mic when they weren't talking. But yeah, it, I don't mind if you if you're not muted as long as you like. I mean, I don't mind also if you just say I second that. That's okay. All right. um, otherwise, let's not interrupt. <laughs> um, so uh, that was Dorothy. Um, Evan, you're voting. <laughs> I thought I, I had gone like this and I thought you thought that was a hand. Yes. George? Yes. Alyssa? Yes. Darcy, yes. Okay. Next, um, we have the design review board. One recommendation of um, a person who's uh, going to represent the historical commission. Is that correct, Paul? Correct. So the historical commission did vote we're getting a little more formal in all these appointments. I have asked the various bodies to actually vote on who they want to be their representative. So they just voted this. And um, so it, she, Ms. Markard is already on the design review board. This will continue her, her term on there. Oh, okay. Uh, comments? Okay, I move to recommend that the town council approve the following person recommended by the town manager to serve on the design review board for a one-year term expiring June 30th, 2021, Janet Marquardt. Second. Um, okay, roll call vote. Um, I can't keep track of this. Um, <laughs> Evan? Yes. George? Yes. Alyssa? Yes. Dorothy? Yes. Darcy, yes. Okay. Uh, next is Munson Memorial Library Trustees. Paul? So, yes, thank you. Um, so the Munson Memorial Building Trustees are charged with overseeing the operations of the Munson Memorial uh, Building and um, the, overseeing the grounds. And um, it's, a, it's a committee that meets probably four times a year. Maybe it doesn't meet that frequently. Um, it's a small committee, only three people. Uh, they, the charge asks that they be someone, people who live in South Amherst. And the people who usually generally um, put their name forward are people who walk by or part, you go to the Munson building quite frequently. Uh, these two people, Susan Crutch and Alexander Niefer, are interesting because Susan Crutch has, was, has grown up in Amherst. She went to kindergarten at the Munson Memorial building, which I did not know it even had, had a kindergarten in it, and nor did many people. Uh, so she is a longtime resident of South Amherst and um, and, her, and has a long lineage in South Amherst. And then Alexander Niefer is someone who's relatively new to town. Um, people, and is a fundraiser by trade, um, people who generally step forward to serve on this building are people who just have a love of the building and want to help to be caretakers uh, and overseers of that building. So. Those are the two appointments for this bill for this committee. Okay, comments or questions? Um, I have a question. Um, do, are these are the trustees um, the advocates to do um, work on the building? As far as like we know, like the HVAC system has, you know, been something that's been on the back burner for a while. So, so what has happened in the past is either it, it has been Rob Mora, but now Jeremiah Laplante will meet once we come up with a, what we need to do to the building. They'll meet with the with the trustees and say, "Here's our work plan. Are there anything else? Is there anything else you think that we should be under considering?" Okay. Um, all right, so um, any other questions or comments or anything? No. I move to recommend that the town council approve the following recommendations to the town manager of persons to serve on the Munson Memorial Library trustees for a three-year term expiring June 30th, 2023, Susan Crutch, and for a one-year term expiring June 30th, 2021, Alexander Neffer. Do I have a second? Dorothy, would you like to second that? 
I second that. Okay. Um, George. Yes. Alyssa. Yes. Darcy, yes. Dorothy. Yes. Evan. Yes. Okay. All right. So that is that with the appointments. Um, and we uh, will forward them to the town council, which will presumably take them up at the November 9th meeting. Um, Thank you. So, so um, we have on our agenda next town manager report update and counselor questions, which does not require the town manager to make a report, but it is about his reports and whether or not we have anything we wanna ask him about since they all just have to do with town services. So, but we may not have any questions at all. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But I think that it's a time when in the future, I mean, it's if we think about it between meetings, there are things that come up sometimes and maybe this would be a time when you could ask the town manager. Dorothy, you're muted. I have a couple of questions. So I'm on the week of um, the report for the 19th of October. And um, it says town staff are working to come together with some childcare options for town staff. And so I wanted uh, an update on that. And um, let's see, one minute, replace. Hmm. Um, so there was something that doesn't make sense. Oh, it's on a different page, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. Then, so then a question on the INET and the replacing the Comcast, and those are the two questions on that one. So, um, and for the your shower, uh, I wanted to just to that. Those are the questions. Three things. Okay. So the uh, child care options uh, for town employees at this moment in time, uh, we have repurposed our LSSE staff to provide. Um, child care options in the middle school um, uh, and this is for and there are stations set up for, so if the students are working or are in school remotely they can work there as well and this allows um, our employees to be able to attend work um, and be able and address one of the child care issues there um, we are looking at expanding that and offering that to the general public um, and and we just had a meeting with that with the superintendent and the director of leisure services, soon to be called recreation department uh, this, this morning. So um, it's worked out pretty well. We, we sort of know they can handle about, about 20 children at this point in time, and we're looking at other options as well. So that's, that's going forward. Um, the second item was the- Shower. The shower. So, um, as you know, Craig's Doors opened at the Unitarian Universalist Church on Sunday, and that has gone pretty successfully. I was at the community breakfast on Wednesday, and it's, it was really, they've done a really wonderful job and give them a ton of credit for getting that space and the University Motor Lodge. I ran into Councillor Ryan, who was getting ready to volunteer his services for the breakfast that gets, that gets prepared. Um, and uh, it's really, it's really beautiful space. It's very sunny. Um, and just, and they've done a lot of really good things um, at the UU church. Um, so showers right now, we are, we've been working on shower options. Um, portable showers, um, we, we have ordered portable showers. Um, they're very hard to come by, uh, but we've decided that we need to have them anyway. Uh, we are also looking at um, space downtown that we can rent that has showers in it, which would be a better solution because portable showers need to be winterized and that's a very different animal. Um, so we're going walking down both paths. And so it's, it's, we're working with a landlord who has a facility that we think could be positive for this. Um, the Board of Health has been um, uh, understanding and while they want there to be showers, they understand that we don't have them and they didn't want to delay the opening of the shelter. There are showers available at the um, survival center. And I think they still have showers available at the First Baptist Church. Um, mm -hmm. So 
it's a, it's an important thing for a shelter to have access to showers. And the showers were very, used um, very regularly at the First Baptist Church, and so if we can get the the actual facility, uh, which is um, that will be the best option for us. And but we decided to go down both paths and thinking that having a set of portable showers might come useful sometime somewhere anyway. Um, and we have the CARES funds that can help pay for that. And the third thing, Dorothy? Um, it's this area about, I don't always understand. Yeah. Information technology. The uh, I, yeah. Yes. So ITED is moving, IT is moving forward on a contract to construct a replacement INET loop yep. to replace the current Comcast loop which the town must abandon, There's a, so we don't need the ED there, in compliance with the contract we have with Comcast, and then delays in obtaining the fiber. Yes. So this is something I've, I've been following this item a little bit, but I, I have to say I don't really okay. know. So I can give you a very brief explanation. I know you have a lot on your agenda. So when, the, when Comcast came in and they built the cable company, Part of the deal was they were going to put fiber in between all of the municipal buildings so that we our internet can work on things and we could communicate with each other our telephone lines with the the uh, dispatch center could connect with the dpw and with the fire and with the town hall so that that wire that's on the telephone poles is owned by comcast and when we are negotiating our contract they said we don't want you on there we don't want to maintain those lines anymore so that was part of the deal they gave us money to move off of that because it was a deal when they took on, they gave us the money to put that, to do that. We were on in process with replacing that with our own wires when the pandemic hit and the place in North Carolina that creates the fiber shut down and we got behind the eight ball. So what uh, we were had, we were supposed to be off on October 15th. So we've negotiated uh, uh, an arrangement with Comcast to continue to stay on for three months. Well, the fiber arrives and gets installed, they can work through the winter. Um, and so we will have brand new fiber up between our buildings. Plus, we're extending it into um, as many locations as we can. So we we are we will ex be extending it into the Mill River uh, area so that our um, you know, the, the swimming pool we can have, um, we will be making all the locks electronics so it can be controlled and monitored. Um, you know, be going to pumping stations right now, pumping stations uh, for our water department are not connected. So they have to go down and monitor them. So, or, or we have a telephone line that goes there and we pay a monthly fee for the telephone line. So our goal is to create our own internal uh, INET of high value of high capacity fiber that will connect all the town buildings and the school, the schools are part of this as well. So one very brief one, if we get to the discussion of, of having municipal uh, broadband, Amherst, this would work with it. It, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fighting against it. It could be part of the right. of so, system. Mm -hmm. So it could, uh, we don't talk about that now because the way we gain access to the poles is that there's a certain uh, number of feet on the poles reserved for municipal use. So we're allowed to put our fiber up for that in that area. If we were to go um, into a different, if we were going to become a competitor of Comcast, then we would have to purchase space on the poll. So we're not there yet. We're, I'm not sure if the town is interested in going down that route. It doesn't preclude us from doing that. This really serves the need that we have right now. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paul. Any other questions? I, I do just want to mention one thing, Dor uh, Darcy. Um, we are we have put all of the um, town manager reports on the town manager page trying to create a little bit um, I know some people say oh it's got a lot of information so we're trying to make it more accessible to people and we'll probably be doing something to alert people that it's available um, so people can follow it so we've, we've already put all the previous ones under the council on the town manager page and people can subscribe so they know when a new one gets posted they can receive it Excellent. That's great. I, you know, I've been I've been saying all along that this is like an, an incredible service that you're providing by putting out those reports. So, um, okay, well, let's move on. Um, we have just one item under our presentation and discussion, which is the um, 
surveillance technology uh, bylaw that both sponsors are here, Mandy Jo Haneke and Pat DeAngelis. Um, at our last meeting, uh, TSO unanimously recommended the adoption of the face recognition bylaw, which was um, originally part of the sponsor's proposal on surveillance technology. Uh, in August and September, the sponsors presented on both parts of their proposal to this committee and town departments provided feedback. The sponsors responded to counselor questions in a memo, which is in the packet, um, and with their creation of a new amended bylaw um, responding to the feedback. So um, I don't know who is starting today, but take it away. Yeah, I can stop, start. Um, we're, we don't have a planned presentation. We just thought we'd summarize some of the changes <clears throat> that happened between the last time you saw this and this time. Um, obviously it's been face, face recognition has been removed from this and you guys dealt with that uh, at the last meeting, I believe. Um, you'll notice a lot of movement of where definitions of things are and what reports need to include and all of that. The, the inclusion of the reports themselves, what's in there didn't change much. Some of it got moved from one report to another um, to try and uh, better uh, sync what the report's purpose is with what's in the report um, because there were a number of different reports referenced. Um, we added the definition of town of Amherst to clearly exclude the library and schools from it. So it's anything just under the purview of the town manager. Um, I, I think this one now better clarifies that once a use of a surveillance is approved, replacing that technology for the same use does not require a new approval. Um, the approvals are required for new uses or new technology. Um, so, you know, new uses means if we already have a technology, but we want to use it for surveillance in a different manner, it would have to come back to the council um, or just buying the technology to begin with. Um, we took out that it applies that permissions required prior to applying for grants, because that was a concern of town staff that it might, um, and I think of some uh, uh, TSO members, that it might prohibit us from applying for grants because of timelines. So, so the requirement to receive you know, approval for use is for the acquiring or borrowing of, not for the seeking of funds to acquire. So the grants could be applied for, but they can't then be used to actually acquire if they're received until approval for the technology is received. Um, we kept the yearly surveillance report in there. Um, and so we made it just one instead of, and about everything. I think last time we had it as annual for police department and whenever asked for other things and people seemed um, to think that that was a little bit cumbersome. So we went back to just yearly for everything. And the biggest change I think is the addition of a community advisory committee on surveillance um, that will issue its own yearly report um, to mainly assess equity impact and policy change recommend recommendations. And while it's a separate committee now, um, given everything that's happening in terms of committee creation and potential police department oversight of other police department items, uh, Pat and I foresee that in the future it might be able to be moved to a different committee or combined with another committee that might be monitoring, you know, a police oversight committee or something. I know that's been one that's been talked about, um, but but in the interim having this committee do it. But similar to on the wage theft where the sponsors utilized an existing committee to do some of the monitoring, we hope in the future that this monitoring can be done and combined with another, other committees that might show up and be created to that have similar purposes. Thank you. Do you have something, anything to add, Pat? Not right now. Okay, questions from counselors. Uh, 
Evan, don't you have a list of 10 questions? <laughs> I guess you've already asked them. <laughs> you asked them the last time. Um, there are hands up, Darcy. Oh, sorry. Dorothy. Dorothy. I don't mean to have my hand up. I'm sorry. I have to turn off that thing because it's in the middle of my screen and I can't see it. It blocks me. So I'm now lowering my hand. Okay. Alyssa. Thank you. I just want I, I just wanted to thank um, the sponsors for being so responsive to our questions. And especially as Mandy Joe indicated, I was concerned about the timing on the grants. So to be able to, you know, to be able to work that into a town council meeting when those grant opportunities, as we've seen from some emails, sometimes say, Oh, you have two weeks to apply. I mean, that's crazy. And so having it cleared up how that could still work and show town council approval, but not stop people from applying. I think that's excellent. So thanks for all that. Thank you, Alyssa. George. I mean, my question was, give me an example of something that the town uses or is planning to use or has thought to use that falls under this description. And the sponsors came back and said, there apparently isn't any. Now, maybe they can, maybe Paul, well, Paul's, Paul's still here, but um, I really struggle with a bylaw that um, is designed for things that uh, the town doesn't do, has no intention of doing. Um, it just, and you know, when you look at all the things that are required here, now we have a committee we're gonna create. The committee has to produce a report. Town manager has to provide the policy and reports. There's an annual surveillance report. Um, I'm struggling personally with why this is needed. So if someone other than simply saying big Brother is here and we need to act, um, I really struggle to see um, why all of this apparatus and all of this, you know, all this reporting, and committee formation, on and on and on. And it has 16 exceptions, right? In, in the, right? And technology is gonna change. It, so it, I don't have a staff. I mean, I've read this two or three times, but a lot of it is way over my head. Um, I'm assuming that a lot of it comes from other bylaws or other, right? Uh, you know, laws that have been passed in other communities. I, I, I hope th that the sponsors did not create this uh, from scratch. Um, but it seems, well, I, it just seems like overkill to the max. So somebody help me. I mean, first of all, give me an example of something the town currently is using that falls under this description. And secondly, if, if there isn't such a thing, and I don't think there is, but I'm well, I'm perfectly willing to be enlightened. Give me an example of something the town might possibly someday consider. I mean, it's a small college town. What what I just struggle to understand what it is that this very elaborate and complex bylaw is seeking to address, other than fears of surveillance in the the larger world we live in, which are real, I understand, but seem, well, so that's my, it's not specific. I mean, I do have one very specific question on 6E3, but that comes later. This is just a larger problem I have personally. I've expressed it before, I express it one more time, um, creating bylaws in anticipation of problems. If I may, Darcy? Sure. Um, so at the September 3rd, 2020 TSO meeting, Sean Mangano identified a number of items that would fall under this. Um, dashboard cameras that are in use by our police department, RFIDs, those are mainly used in the library um, and on probably employee ID cards for tagging in and out of buildings. Um, the schools have cameras on buses and vans. The region has cameras. We have cameras outside of town hall that monitor 
um, I think the common um, or the parking lots there. Um, and so those are just some things, some of which with the definition of town of Amherst would be excluded from this bylaw, the buses, you know, cameras on buses, the library RFID system um, we've now excluded, but, but the dashboard cameras at the police department um, are one that would be included on this and that we know exist. Um, and so, so why it is being proposed by Pat and I is because uh, for your very concern, no one knows exactly what's out there that is surveilling people in town. And so we want a list of that. And Pat and I are proposing it so that people, transparency can know. But, but the other important one is once that video is captured, no one knows we don't have a policy for how it's used or how long it's kept or who can access it. And so the point of this bylaw is to create those policies, to create the transparency for what is being used and to then be able to put out there for you know, the public and for the council and for the town who can access them, how long they're kept and all of that. Uh, an example that you said asked for, for in the future, we got an email just today as to town council um, asking for body cameras on police officers. And so we don't have them yet, um, but if the police department decides to investigate that and propose that, this bylaw would require those policies to be in effect and the council to approve the use of them before they're acquired. I hope that answers that question. So it's body cameras and uh, dashboard cameras used by the police. Those are the two uh, areas of concern that this bylaw has been constructed and will address. And then some future unforeseen uh, threats that uh, are yet to be described. I mean, it, to me, again, it sounds like something that could be dealt with through, um, you know, maybe an oversight committee if that gets created, but just uh, it, it basically involves the police department and what their policies are with body cameras and dashboard cameras. Um, but this bylaw is much more than that. It, it covers a huge ground. And as I've said, there are a whole host of exceptions that, you know, are we going to change them every few years as the technology changes? Um, it's extremely uh, elaborate and detailed, and yet it has lots of exceptions. And the only thing that, that we can point to is, you know, police department using uh, dashboard cams and body cameras, which in many communities they're being, you know, encouraged to use. Um, to help make policing more, um, you know, transparent to the public. Um, so these are my conflicting values in a way. Um, but anyway, this could be addressed through some kind of police department policy overseen by the town manager. And if there's a problem with it, people could raise their, their concern. I just struggle to see why this is needed in all of its uh, complexity and all of its exceptions um, and all of its various reports committees formation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I just, I personally just have a problem with it. Can I say something? Yes, Pat. Um, yeah, thank you, Mandy Jo. Um, I think that you did a good job of answering. Uh, but George, you said, you know, we're a small town police department, blah, blah, blah. No judgment with the blah, blah, blah. Um, but in truth, we don't know who is going to lead the department when Scott leaves. We don't know what government mandates are going to come down that we as a town uh, will support. Or, um, and I, I think that the penchant for this government to surveil, et cetera, is very real. And so what we're saying is we want a system in place, a process in place to evaluate any suggested surveillance technology that comes forward. And that may seem like, oh, out in the future, um, but it affects us right now. We need to know when a, a proposal is made to do a DNA capture, what are the impacts of that on residents? Uh, you know, and, and we need to have a sense of whether or not that's something that we can support. So I, I feel like a process- Can I, can can I just ask a clarifying question? I mean, again, this is, I go to my staff, but they don't respond. Um, you know, 
What's a DNA capture? We're DNA about... capture, it's a, a, it is literally a, an, a police tool for, uh, you know, it is what a is it, medical tool? tool? What is it? Forensics tool. Forensics but tool. Also, and, and it could be something that we decide to buy. It could be part of a government grant. Hey, you can get this lovely capture. And the, what the capture does, one of the things is that DNA is very, uh, uh, <laughs> it can move, um, literally. I can touch you on the shoulder and therefore some of my DNA will be on you. And what they've been finding is people who are innocent of crimes, okay, partic um, are often picked up by DNA. Uh, and one of the things that's true is there was a case, and I forget what state it was in, I, I apologize, where um, a black man was picked up for a home invasion, okay? And he, his DNA was found at the home invasion scene. Okay, as it got investigated, all right, it was discovered that he had an ironclad alibi and so they were trying to figure out how did his DNA come to be at the crime scene. And as they unraveled things, he had been treated by the paramedic team that had been called to the crime scene. And his DNA had been deposited on the paramedics and they deposited it at the crime scene. So I'm not saying that we're going to run out and buy that or but if we were, that's what we need to understand. And it's also true that DNA um, <laughs> forensically has, again, been biased around people of color in terms of it is less accurate, et cetera, given that we generally choose Caucasians to establish um, a baseline. So for me, it is I want to know that I have, I can understand where things are being stored. I can understand if a resident comes forward to us and says, I want to know what happened here. I, I, this is my experience, but I want some, I want to see what was uh, recorded, what was observed. I think we have a responsibility to have a way to do that. So I, I'm, you know, I understand your personal objection and perhaps mine is a personal um, support in the sense of we need to hold ourselves accountable and responsible for what we purchase and what we use. And right now, things are not investigated. It sounds like a good idea, so we get it, or we don't get it. Um, so I don't know, I'm rambling a little bit, but. Oh, thank you, Pat. Um, Alyssa, do you have something to add? Yes, please. <clears throat> I I don't think we're going to come to agreement, you and I, on this, George, but I, I do hear your part about this has many complex pieces. It specifically identifies certain other things. It's trying to guess about future things. I get that. At the same time, I want to push back a little on a couple of the things that um, I've also heard, which is that you could just have a policy and the town manager could just enforce that policy and it could be a police policy. And I'm just gonna call bullshit right there because there is no such thing as that that has any input from the public. When something like that happens, there is no current now, future there may be, but right now there is no police policy that has community input, that has elected official input. There is zero policy established that way. And so it isn't just a matter of we're not the executive. It's also a matter of there's zero community input on those things now. And that may change, right? As we go through the community safety working group and they come up with some things. So the other thing to think about is that this is not outlining that all these things are necessarily bad. They're just saying we have to think them through in terms of their impact and good people make decisions that make sense to them without having thought about some of those ramifications. It doesn't just have to be like a bizarro one-off CSI type crime <laughs> like TV show, like that's, which that sounds like the plot of, right? But it's that we traditionally in this country think things through from a white person's standpoint, and we do not necessarily think about, well, might this impact 
women differently? Might it impact people of color differently? Might it impact younger people or older people differently because of where we've deployed a certain technology? Are we only doing this near apartment complexes? And what is that message that we're sending by doing this near apartment complexes? So it's not that we would definitely say no to all these things. I don't think that's why we're trying to put the bylaw into place is to be able to say, nope, 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 nope. It's on this list, forget about it. It's that, okay, you say you want it, tell us what it is and tell us how it how how it's been thought through so far we i want to also reflect for just a moment back to our sanctuary community designation there was talk back then as that was being developed as well we have an excellent police department they're not going to help ice round people up that's not their attitude that's not their informal policy but it was still useful to pass the bylaw to have that not only as our it's more than virtue signaling. It's not only that virtue signaling, but it's also saying these are our values and this is what we have to talk about if something like this comes up. So I'm looking at it as a, this forces us to talk about it, not that this forces anybody to say no. And because of things like the timing on the grants, it doesn't preclude anybody from trying to get technology that they think makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Alyssa. Um, yeah, I would also agree that I you know, am grateful to the sponsors for uh, accommodating all of this committee's requests to, to uh, make amendments to the bylaw. And um, I would basically agree with everything that Alyssa just said. Um, I'd be interested to hear from Dorothy and Evan, um, since we're, we're kind of going toward a potential vote. Um, just interested to hear where you are. I guess I'm halfway. I understand what George was saying. I really think I'm not quite sure how this gets um, dealt with. It sounds that uh, you really do need some trained paid staff. Um, it's certainly not something that I think we as town council members will be doing. Um, is this something that a committee of citizens does? I, I don't think so. Um, I, I'm not against having some rules or regulations or guidelines, but this sounds awfully complex. So I'm the part where I agree with George is so many layers of work, so many reports, so many meetings. I'm seeing a problem with that, but I also understand some of the motivation behind the sponsors of this, this bill. So I, I guess if there are a way to accomplish some of the goals in a much simpler form, I would feel a lot uh, more positive about it. Do either of the sponsors wanna to respond to that? Evan? Um, yeah, so I guess um, this, is, this is complicated. And so uh, the first discussion we had, I did my best to read through this and understand it and prepare questions, which was difficult. Um, and what I found um, really helpful at that time and really illuminating actually was to hear from um, the police chief to hear from, um, I think Sean Mangano was there, to hear from IT, um, because they are the ones who actually have to implement this. Um, and they expressed at the time a lot of confusion and a lot of concerns. Um, and I was able to understand this bylaw better um, as I heard from the people who have to implement this. And so um, I'm finding myself in a similar situation, I think, to Dorothy. I understand the intent. I worry that reading it, it just feels like more reports that have to be written and have to be read or hopefully read. I feel like we're constantly talking about reports. Um, Mandy and Pat, who both served with me on GOL, probably knew that I would wince at the suggestion of creating a new committee. Um, which I assume is also, I, there was some argument of, well, maybe this could be merged with the community safety, because at this point, it seems like all we do is create committees um, and then talk about how it's hard to recruit people for all these committees um, and the amount of 
staff time that is devoted to interviews, to calling people, to um, posting. I'm, I, I'm really hesitant about making more committees. And so which I think where, where I'm aligning with Dorothy is the intent is there, but I'm struggling to see the, the cost benefit analysis be, between um, the, the benefit and sort of, is this the best way to achieve it? Because on the surface, it looks like kind of a lot of new bureaucracy added on um, to, to what's already sort of complicated. So I guess where I stand right now is I'm not ready to vote on this tonight. And I think the reason I'm not ready to vote on this tonight um, is because we haven't heard from staff again. The first time we heard from staff on this um, was they, they expressed a lot of confusion and concerns. And so now we have an updated version, which I, I read the best I could it, with my brain that is not working at full capacity this week. Um, I also don't know if we had a redlined version of this. I wasn't able to get my version to open, the Word version to open in my packet. So I've been reading the PDF version that's posted with the online meeting posting, which doesn't show what the changes are. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I'm admitting that I did not come here as prepared as I would have liked to be to, to do this, but I, I would be interested to hear whether or not the concerns that were expressed by staff, they feel like the changes um, have been addressed. And so at, at this point, um, I don't feel necessarily like I have um, what I need to, to actually make a recommendation um, to the council. Is that a new hand, George? Yeah, I, I was going to ask the sponsors to just give these, us some idea of the addition. The, the one addition that Mandy pointed out um, that stands out is the creation of the Committee Advisory Committee. And I just wondered if you could uh, sort of say a little bit about why you decided to do that and what's the, what's the reasoning behind it. So um, as George, I guess, wondered, much of this and the prior one was based on some ACLU model bylaws. Um, and the prior one was mostly based on Cambridge who had based it on an ACLU model bylaw. Um, we, we went to many different model bylaws, each ACLU, like Northern California had their own model and they were all slightly different based on probably how many years it had been since one came out. So many of the definitions were just updated um, a little bit, but the reason for the committee um, actually, part of it is because of concern that we heard at the last meeting of, well, the, the yearly report had to report on disparate impacts. And well, and, and so did the use policy of that it wouldn't have disparate impacts. And the TSO committee members, some expressed concern that, that staff would just say, well, there aren't not any. Um, and so part of the reason for the committee, which we found in one of the model bylaws, we didn't make that one, the committee up ourselves, it was in a model bylaw, um, was that then that committee could also address the disparate impacts if there are any that might be a little more um, seen as a little more neutral potentially than the staff who is using the technology reporting on whether it is disparately impacting residents. Um, so, so I think that it, Pat, Pat can add to it, but I think that was one of the main reasons we liked the creation of a resident committee, even though we hesitate to create yet more committees. <laughs> yeah, I would, if I may, Darcy, um, I would just add that when Mandy Jo was presenting this, she talked about combining it uh, with a resident oversight committee uh, for the police department. Uh, and I think that's a primary goal of some of us on the council and certainly many residents in the community who are really saying we need a resident oversight. So I, I find this committee um, an important one. Um, and and I, also, I also feel like um, if we have so little currently of surveillance technology, the amount of reporting that will need to be done is limited. 
Um, and we did have town staff in initial meetings about these bylaws. Uh, and the other thing is that last time, um, I believe it was Evan you, that you brought up the, the staff input and, and Paul was asked to either gather that and bring it to the, this meeting, I thought, or um, we need to look at if we're not gonna get it uh, recommended tonight, that we, at the next TSO meeting, that we actually invite the staff that you wanna interview. Um, and I think that's, that's a request that we need to make of Paul and that should be followed through on just like we should have gotten information tonight from the um, Paul, maybe you could, um, could, is there anything that you could address tonight with regard to feedback on the, the bylaw? Are you still there? Oh, maybe he's not. Okay, well, I guess we're not going to get feedback right now. Um, Darcy, yes. It, it, it doesn't relate to that while we're trying to get him. I wanted to respond to Evan's thoughts on whether it's a red line version. The, the word version that was sent to the packet is not a red line version, it's a clean version. The I'm not sure I can produce a red line version from the one you saw September 3rd to tonight's version. I can produce an initial red line version um, that then got cleaned up and a couple more things changed. The reason it's not here is because with the split and then with moving of the report, what's included in each of these reports from the definition section into each of the sections, it got really messy to follow. Um, so, you know, I, if, if you want to see some of those back versions, I have copies of them that I could send to the committee. It's just, it's not going to be as easy to look at as you would hope it is. <laughs> uh, Dorothy. So I have a better understanding of this after that last comment of Pat's that you had hoped to have this combined with the resident oversight committee of the police department. And I think that is where it belongs. So I, I, I wish Paul were present at this moment, but I am for holding off on acting on this at this moment until that committee is together and functioning. And then I think that this uh, subcommittee could present it to them and see if that fits in. I mean, I think we're kind of jumping the gun and, and kind of like doing something that maybe they might want to do or may want, might want us. They, of course, they still would have to be passed by the town council, but our passing it before the committee is even met might not be the best way to start. I'm just putting that out there for discussion. That's all. Um, can I, can I yeah, we don't have a resident oversight committee, nor has one been uh, proposed. Uh, we have a community safety committee that is going to be looking about at whether or not there are things that the police currently do that can be moved elsewhere. We don't have a resident oversight committee is very different and we have not as a council at all moved forward on that, even with the evolution of the community safety committee, um, it's not clear that it would be an oversight committee. Um, so that's something that has to be decided. Um, and yeah, so I'll just say that. Oh, well, I understand that. But the reason we didn't do it, didn't consider it and didn't go forward was because we decided that we shouldn't do it, that there should be a, a citizens committee that should do that. Um, it's some, one of the many things that's on the table for that committee to suggest. It's called a public safety just to give it um, a name. It doesn't say this is the only thing you can do. It's the committee that was to address these problems. And I, I just think it would be, you know, taking away some of their possible things. That's all. Where, the, where it goes from there, none of us know. None of us know. We're not in charge of it. So I'd like to see where they want to take it. That won't happen until June of 2021 is when, what the charge is for that 
committee. But um, uh, Mandy Joe, did you want to say something else? Yeah, I just wanted to, I, I obviously haven't talked to my co-sponsor about this, but if this committee is concerned with the creation of a new committee, um, as it was with the responsible employee, the wage and tip theft bylaw, um, Pat and I, if we talk and maybe we could, and maybe we could reach out to the Human Rights Commission, maybe we could consider um, assigning it to, you know, assigning these duties to the Human Rights Commission as an interim if this committee is really concerned with the creation of another committee. I'm throwing that out there. I don't know whether that's wise or not. And Pat and I obviously have not discussed that, but I know that was a, a solution uh, the sponsors in this committee found to the wage and tip theft bylaw. Um, and I, I just have a quick question for the sponsors, and that is, um, did you have a chance to talk to the, any of the staff between the time, between the last meeting when they were present and your amended, make, writing your amended version? We have not talked to them, but we also have never received from Paul the list of staff concerns that was supposed to come to us after the last September meeting. Uh huh. Okay, Alyssa. So I, I want to throw a couple of points out there. One is that although I am definitely all about enforcing things when we possibly can. I think the reality is if we passed this bylaw as a town council and within three months we didn't do something, there's no enforcement mechanism here to make us do it. And there's no punishment for anyone for not having done it. So it would not be, it's not a great situation to go into something knowing that you might not meet a deadline, but the reality is it doesn't matter if we don't meet the deadline as far as I can tell. So I was originally thinking, ooh, maybe we should change it to six months. Um, and again, the idea of perhaps the Human Rights Commission could, could serve this role, at least on a temporary basis, but it's definitely not something the Community Safety Working Group is going to be able to approach any time in the next in the near future. It's, that's right. not their charge. And they won't have created another committee in time to do this either. So I'm not quite sure what to do with that portion of it. Setting that aside for a moment, looking at the part about staff input and that and the feedback on the revised version. As Mandy Joe just pointed out, we didn't, they didn't get the staff input that they asked for. So therefore we're not getting the staff input that was asked for. And I wanna make a couple of points about that. One is that obviously everyone's overstretched. Two is that, I don't want the police and IT coming back to another TSO meeting to just sort of free form answer questions. No, I want a written report from them. I don't think I'm gonna get it. I think that's pretty evident that I'm not gonna get it. And so given that, and I don't think it's valuable actually to just bounce it around with them because when we take it to town council, town council is going to ask the exact same questions. Where's the written report that explains how they can react to this? Where's and and then they actually, you know, they get it ahead. Of, council gets it ahead of time, thinks about it. Then when Scott and IT come to the meeting, the town council meeting, they can say, oh, that's what this means. Not just let's just have some random informal response to random questions that arise on the floor at a given moment when people are tired for other things given we have a process that we're still trying to make ourselves work through as a TSO, and at the same time, we have all these other things going on, I am strongly tempted to have us go ahead and say to the town council, we can't come up with a majority vote on this. We're missing this piece of information. We have this other misgivings. We have these other enthusiasms. We're bringing it back to the town council with our recommendation is the town council needs to look at this as a group. And the reason I say that is again, because it doesn't matter how good of a report I get from Scott and IT, which I'm not gonna get, but it doesn't even matter how good of a report that is, the town council is still gonna have all those questions too. So rather than delaying, 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 I feel like it's, I don't feel like TSO 
can add anything else to this process. We've tried, we asked for certain things, we asked for it to be split up, we asked for certain responses, we got a lot of those, we didn't get the staff feedback that we were looking for. I don't see that we're going to. And so having us keep holding it doesn't feel to me like it's helping town council. And that's what our goal is, right? Is we're to help the full town council. So I would just as soon turn it back to the full town council, say, this is where we're at and ask the town council, what do you think we should do? Do you wanna all come back to a TSO meeting and watch us talk to IT and the police? Do you want us to just have it done at town council? What's your preference rather than just pushing it down the road? Um, George. I find that this, what we're doing is very helpful. Um, I come with a lot of questions, complaints and, and whatever, but, you know, for instance, Alyssa's response earlier, um, caused me to think, um, there is perhaps a role for this, uh, creating a policy is not right necessarily a bad thing. An example she gave was very illustrative. So I find what we're doing um, very helpful. Um, it doesn't lead to an immediate vote, doesn't lead to immediate decision. Uh, I'm trying to think my way through this. I think a number of um, my colleagues have expressed that this is, and the sponsors know it, it's a complicated uh, piece of legislation. It's got a lot of moving parts. Um, it's not something that I think we should expect to go through in like one or two meetings. Um, we do want to move with all deliberate speed. So on the one hand, I want to credit Alyssa for her earlier response because it, it got me thinking, okay, there is perhaps a very good reason for why we, uh, the sponsors have put this forward. Um, we still have questions about whether we need to form a committee. There are other little specific details that we can look into. I would still like to hear a little bit more from staff, though I hear Alyssa's point that Maybe it'll just be another one of those meetings where nothing really gets accomplished. And at that point, even I will throw up my hands. But um, I'm not, I don't think going back to the town council saying we can't make up our minds, uh, we're trying to make up our minds. I think we hopefully we can reach a consensus uh, together um, and say, okay, um, but it's going to take some time. Um, I've already found in, the, in just the 20 or 30 minutes of this discussion that um, I see more clearly now what the sponsors have been trying to say, um, that there is a place for creating this policy and having the town manager report back to us on a yearly basis. Um, I begin to see that that makes sense. I still have some concerns about the impact it has on staff. I'd like to hear some more from them. Um, I do not want to create a new committee, but maybe I'll change my mind there too. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I think the human rights suggestion is excellent. Um, it seems like a perfect thing for them to, to take on if it's necessary. Um, I really don't think there are going to be a lot of instances where this is going to be an issue. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't think there's going to be. But if there are, the Human Rights Commission would seem a perfectly logical place for it to go. Um, so anyway, I think I find myself by listening to hear what, what you've been saying, hearing the sponsors, listening to Alyssa and the rest of you, um, you know, I can change my mind. I, I can see that, okay, this makes, there's there's a reason for this. It's not just virtue signaling, as Alyssa pointed out. It isn't, okay, but it's gonna take time. Um, hopefully not months and months, maybe one or two more meetings, I don't know, but I don't think we should throw up our hands and say, oh my God, we can't reach a conclusion. We can't come to a vote. Evan wants this, George wants that. Um, let's take our time, uh, at least one more session, maybe two. And at that point, if we can't reach consensus, if the five of us can't agree and, and the sponsors agree with certain changes or whatever, then we go back to the council and say, okay, um, we have nothing really to give you. Um, so I think we should hang in there um, and not send it back to the council yet. Okay, thank you, George. Um, so let's hear from Dorothy and Alyssa and then try to wrap up in some way or another. Uh, briefly, um, I'm agreeing with a lot of what George said. I think that what we have been doing here is helpful. I don't think that we have to necessarily come out with a report to the town council because, well, this is totally correct. There's no way the town council will read our report, no matter how beautifully written or whatever, or how unanimous, and say, great, we're going to do this. They're going to be asking 
questions and they're going to want to know the same stuff from the staff. So, um, but this gets our minds working, gets the sponsors um, thinking of how to respond. I, I do like the suggestion of the human rights committee looking at it. Um, one of the things we're supposed to be doing is not necessarily speaking for other people or sp speaking on issues that apply more to other people than to us. And this is, um, that's why I thought the, the Human Rights Commission would be good so we just see what they think about this, how seriously they take it. And maybe this is a very hot issue. I don't know because we haven't asked them. Okay, thank you, Dorothy. Um, I guess I would just like to, to say that I, I uh, do really appreciate the sponsors bringing this forward and I do find it to be a very valuable bylaw and I think it's, as I've said before, very forward thinking and, and needed in this era. Um, I think that, that um, that even though we don't necessarily see the threats right at the moment, that um, we see it in all other parts of our lives, that surveillance is, is, uh, is a trend. And um, so, yeah, big brother, there it is. Um, anyway, um, I think that, that George, uh, made a good suggestion. And uh, so the question is sort of what, in what form we want to hear back from uh, the town. Are you, are you there yet, Paul, by any chance? Um, if um, we could conceivably, uh, I could contact the town manager and ask them to uh, get back from the different departments in writing to us before the next meeting. Um, I could just ask him to come and represent them at our next meeting. I could ask the, the sponsors, or we could ask the sponsors to meet with um, the town manager or department heads before the next meeting. Um, my preference is the first is to ask the town manager to get back to us in writing before the next meeting um, in response to the new bylaw and the idea about the, his opinion about the committee. Um, what are, are there any people who disagree with that? So why don't I, George? I, I think, you don't mean obviously the, the the meeting that you mean the next formal no, no, meeting, not, not the twelfth. Right. What would be the date? Does somebody the 19th. know? Nineteenth. Nineteenth. And our meeting on the nineteenth is um, that's the me the evening of the public budget forum at six thirty. So our meeting is at four thirty that day. Got moved with your consent, FYI. Um, so is. Is that good for you sponsors to come back on the 19th? And I will ask the town manager to respond to us in writing um, and we'll see what happens. And I think this has been a good discussion. Um, do, do the, I'm sorry to interrupt, Darcy, but do the sponsors feel like they have a clear sense of what they're being asked to do for next time? Um, Darcy's made it clear that she, as chair, will reach out to Paul and, and try to get a written report from him articulating um, concerns, issues, problems, I take it is what we're asking from town staff. He would be the funnel through which that would come rather than inviting, again, the police chief from Mangana or whatever. It would be Paul's either in person or a written report that we would hopefully get in advance. That's gonna be a challenge that we read uh, before we gather uh, on the, what is it, the 19th. Um, and then I think what I've heard is that 
we, we'd like to, them to explore the human rights option, human rights commission option. Um, again, I'm speaking for myself, but I really am not keen to have another committee created, but that's, you know, the sponsors will present what they're gonna present. But what else are we asking them to do um, so that we actually do make some progress next time? If we hear from staff, that would be pleasing to me and I think to Evan and maybe to the rest of you. We hear about the Human Rights Commission, I think that would be, you know, are they interested? Is that, do the sponsors want to still go ahead with their own committee? That I don't even necessarily think it's a deal breaker, but that's something we'd like to know. I have a few more specific questions that can wait till next time, um, but they're, they're picky things. They're not the larger issue of why do we need this? Um, that's been addressed this evening and I think it's been addressed before, but I think very nicely tonight. So sponsors seem like they have a clear sense of what they need to do. Darcy has a clear sense, is that fair to say? Yes, um, and I'm assuming the two of you are going to be meeting and talking about the the uh, potent, the possibility of um, amending the committee piece. Um, Pat, I, I you know George is saying he has some picky issues. I think it would be uh, efficient if you emailed them to us. Exactly. And I would say that to the entire committee so that we can look at them instead of wait until next time to hear them and yeah. not. So I think that would be really helpful, George. No, I, I agree that that's I was exactly going to say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. and um, to the you know, to the extent that the town manager can get back to us sooner, obviously that would be helpful to the sponsors also before the next meeting. He needs uh, to be pushed a little because he's been asked at several meetings to present this information and we haven't gotten it. So. I think he really has to know that it's a clear um, deadline. Okay, so we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll try, I'll ask him to get it to you early enough so that you can respond to it before the meeting. Um, okay, so um, I think we know what we're doing on that. Um, and it's 8.06. Can I? What's that? Alyssa? Alyssa yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, so you're gonna talk to the town manager about the fact that he hasn't gotten back to the sponsors in the way that they asked. And also like they can make sure that their questions reflect the kinds of questions we just had tonight since they haven't been answered yet, might as well include all of that. Um, so there's gonna be some communication there that you're gonna facilitate Darcy between the town manager and the, the sponsors to ensure that the town manager understands that we need this as George indicated, preferably ahead of time on the night prior to the 19th. And then in terms of this, so the sponsors actions, the only thing they're really doing between now and then, if I'm clear is that if material does come back or if there's confusion about what those questions are to be answered they're addressing that with the town manager and then the other thing they're doing is they're thinking about their committee piece and they're and they're potentially contacting the human rights commission is is that the gist of it or am i missing something we hadn't discussed that but does that make sense mandy joe and pat i was going to say that that was my understanding on the committee function and I, I don't know just add whatever you know if there's other as George said picky things if they could be emailed to us so that we can potentially create a new track changes version addressing some of those depending on what they are um, that would be helpful too okay everybody happy now <laughs> I'm not happy None of us are happy. Today. Happiness is overrated, quite frankly. But uh. <laughs> um, okay, so um, that's it for presentations, uh, discussion, and presentations. Um, we're on to minutes. Um, thank you, Mandy. Thank you all. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Okay, so we have the the um, October eighth minutes. Last that was the last meeting. About a month ago. Melissa has a hand up, and maybe it's residual. Pardon? Melissa oh. has a hand up. 
Is that is that a current hand, Alyssa? That was just the one I shouted about earlier. It's all good. Okay. Um, okay, so have you all had a chance to look at the minutes? Um, they weren't amended at all. Uh, they're just as they came. Um, Can I make a motion or uh, to approve the please, minutes? Please, please the minute? Did you just move? Yes, I move to approve the minutes as presented. Okay, uh, Dorothy. You're muted. I had read half of them, but I'm just skimming over the bit about TAC. And I guess I wish that the minutes were fuller on that. As I read over, I mean, I have my own notes, which are chaotic on that meeting. I'm trying to figure out what did we just hear um, and what we're going to do about TAC. Um, I, so I, I found the meetings, the, the minutes on that part too skimpy. So I'm wondering if there's a possibility of fuller minutes on that part of this, on that issue, the TAC. I, um, are you requesting that, Dorothy? Well, okay. We know that we have to do something about TAC and whatever it is and its relationship to TSO that this is an item that we're going to be acting on. We had a big discussion with people from TAC, which is going to be part of what we consider as we go forward. In looking at the minutes, I'm finding it not clear. Can I just second George's motion? I feel like it's just been sort of sitting there. Yeah, yes. Um, so I could just, I'm just making a statement. Well, I'll accept the meetings, but I'm just making a statement of concern that this is an issue that we're going to be dealing with in the future and that um, we spent a lot of time on it and I'm looking at the minutes here and I don't even know, I'm not even sure what half of them mean, the, the, the four bubbles, the little dots, you know, of what we needed to do. Um, right. Well, I think that that's, that is an issue um, basically between Athena and Emily and if we have an opinion, we need to put it out there because if we want um, minutes that basically detail what each counselor said, that's fine with me. But right now, that's not what what is happening. Well, it's not even not what each counselor said, but it is just TAC relationship with the Department of Public Works and Town Council. Concerns about TAC public outreach without consulting Town Council. Town Council delegating authority to TAC or other committees. And who does TAC report to? These are huge issues. And I don't really care who said what, but there was a lot more said that we have to at some point deal with. And the minutes do not give us, the minutes are too skimpy. Okay, well. So just, uh, just, just making a suggestion, a suggestion. I mean, I have my own scribbly minutes, which with some effort I could find. But when we deal with this, we had them here for an hour. It was a big discussion. And then it kind of dropped and all I've got left is these minutes and it's not it's not enough. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Well, we obviously have the video. So it's not like we don't have the discussion, okay. but, um, and we have the report that I think is a little more detailed. But anyway, I can talk to Athena and ask her what she thinks. I, I personally would like uh, a little bit more um, also, but I think it's been between Athena and Emily. Emily, if you want to weigh in, <laughs> you're welcome to. Um, but uh, I think that generally, uh, you know, Athena has, has been suggesting that it be on the lighter side. But if we want it more, we, we can do that. I would actually prefer it myself. I like blow by blow myself. I want, I want to hear what every single person said. But I've forgotten that the minutes weren't yours, and so I was really speaking personally to you. I think these are Darcy's, and she didn't. Yeah, okay, you're right. The minutes are much more complicated than that. Right. Yes. All right. Uh, oh, oh, look, everyone wants to talk now. Uh, George. 
I, just quickly, I, I think one has to go to the tape. Um, I think I, we, and I, I'm not happy about that either, but I think even if we had excellent minutes, one might still have to go back to the tape for something like TAC, because it is it was a long discussion. It was detailed. There was a lot of back and forth. Um, and I do believe we are going to pick this up at some future meeting, correct? It will be an agenda item where we will go. We were supposed to, I thought we were going to do it this time, but maybe I've forgotten. But um, at some point we will come back to TAC and that conversation. And at that point, some of us, at least one of us, at least, should go back and look at the tape. Sure. Um, Emily, you have something to add? Yeah. Um, so first of all, I just want to say that I actually thought that I was taking too long of notes. So lately I've been trying to like consolidate them a little bit more. I thought that you guys were like, oh my God, so many pages. But if you guys want me to do more detail, I can do more detail. So what if you guys really want me to like, I can go back and fill in a more detailed part of that tack if you want me to because i just have to look at the video but um if you want to do that instead of approving them i totally get that i could probably give it to you literally like within the next two days but oh. it's up to you guys okay in, in your in your raw minutes emily did you did you take all of the detailed notes and then you condensed it um, usually, I mean, usually I get most of it and I try not to condense it too much, but I, for that meeting, I remember that was a long one. Um, I don't know if I, I can't really remember because I usually work off of the same document, but for that section, I mean, I, for that section, I can just go back and like do a more detailed description. Okay. Do we think that's necessary, Dorothy? Well, um, I see head shaking, but I do. And you know, um, at ACC, we have to record our classes and they are automatically captioned, uh, often slightly poorly, but they can be, um, I'm just wondering if it would be easier to have the, our recording change. I guess we do it through Kaltura to have the, the minutes captioned and then the note taker makes the corrections because it, it's, it's, Anyway, it's just it's just a thought. I understand that it's very difficult to do these things, but I do. I there was a long, detailed discussion. I don't relish having to go and find the video that will probably take me three hours right there and then watching it um, to do it. So I would appreciate if she if she was able to do it and it's not too onerous. You know, if it's really really hard, I I, I feel bad asking you to do it. But if it's not too difficult, I would appreciate it. Um, no, it's not. That wouldn't be difficult. I can do that. Alyssa, you have something to add? I do. I, it, it's not up to TSO how much time Emily spends on this. That's actually not okay for her to, to sort of volunteer to do that without talking to her boss, which we are not her boss. We, she's paid based on the kinds of minutes that the town has decided are adequate minutes. I understand what you're saying, Dorothy, about those not being as much as you'd like, but we she can't thank you very much for agreeing emily but you can't do that <laughs> that's not okay for you to do that you need to talk to your boss about this is what they said this is how long i think it'll take me are you cool with that that would be fine but i don't want to pressure you to do that and i also don't feel at all comfortable saying that because every committee could be looking at this differently in terms of how much detail they want i think one of the fundamental issues though here dorothy is here's the reality of town government you don't get a transcript you have to take your own notes the minutes are never going to be sufficient to tell you what happened at a meeting and nobody ever wants to go back and watch the video all those things are true you're not you don't want to watch it it's not going to it's not a transcript it's not going to be sufficient and we certainly don't want a blow by blow and then councillor pam said and then Bruce said blah 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 i mean it would be cool actually if that was just all automated and we could read that of course it would take us several hours to read it but that's not how minutes work that's not what minutes are if you look at what the state requires of minutes it's nowhere near that level of detail and so to say I'm frustrated because the minutes don't have enough information for me to be able to act next time. That's actually your problem, not the minutes problem, because we have to take our own notes. We can't just depend on the minutes to get us to where we want to go. 
I'm sorry that it's not that simple, but it's just not. Okay, why well, I, I suggest, I have a suggestion. Why don't I um, talk with Athena about it and tell her that this was brought up as an issue. And in the meantime, why don't we approve these minutes and, um, uh, and then going forward, if Athena is okay with us having a little bit more fleshed out minutes, then we'll do that. Um, but I, it is it is also a question of you know how much we pay our minute takers and how long it takes them. Um, so okay, and thank you for offering that, Emily, because that was very nice of you to do. Um, so and I'll talk with Alyssa, uh, with Athena. Uh, so um, shall we approve these minutes? We have to have a vote. Yes, I'm just waiting for someone to object. <laughs> no, 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 okay. I have a motion that's been seconded, so I'll do his vote. Uh, so, okay, Alyssa. Yes. Uh, Darcy, yes. Dorothy. Yes. Evan. Yes. George. Yes. Okay. That was a long time to approve the minutes. Um, anyway, okay, so announcements. We have, um, we now have our next meeting on November 12th at 5 p.m. And then we have the next week meeting the 19th at 4.30. So that's confusing, uh, <laughs> but that's what we're doing. Um, and so we'll announce that at the meeting on Monday, just in case anyone's interested. Um, and the next meeting agenda preview, I am interested in hearing from, well, we're obviously on the 19th, we're going to have, have the surveillance technology back. Um, I'm interested in hearing from both George and Dorothy and from Alyssa on their, they all have agenda topics that are out there. Just wondering if you have any thoughts about when they might come up. Well, Dorothy and I have met with Guilford and we have asked him to um, send us something before the 19th meeting. So if we get that, um, we would be prepared to talk about the, the broader issue of parking regulations townwide. So not Lincoln per se, but the larger issue of, you know, does is there make sense for this committee or somebody to, to fashion townwide um, regulations? Um, and so we would hopefully be prepared to speak on that. We're speaking only on residential parking. Okay, so we're not doing the same thing the parking study was doing. No, not downtown, not village centers, and not major thoroughfares. It's residential parking. And Guilford felt that there might be some sense to creating a set of guidelines or regulations, um, and also whether it could be centralized in some way. So it's all fairly speculative at the moment, but we thought we might have something to give you. Um, right now, we don't know for certain, though, because Guilford has to get back to us. And right. so when you say you thought you might, you think you might have something to give us in like slides or a report or something, a proposal? And a proposal is possible. Yeah. But the, not if it doesn't exist now, it's going, it needs to be created. Well, it's, con it's contingent on what happens from Guilford. I mean, we're waiting for something from him. So right. it does, that does not currently exist. That is correct. And he thinks needs to exist. But I mean, I wrote a report of the meeting, which I sent to Guilford and George for comments and correction before, you know, I was going to send it to you. But there's a lot of issues here that are very, uh, very important. Uh, Guilford was very interested in our working on this, but it's in his court right now. He is sending a, um, a list of the things that he thinks, and we will then very soon 
be able to present something to the committee. Okay, so so we should pencil in uh, this report into very the lightly. Yes, very lightly. Yeah, uh, Alyssa. So <clears throat> Lynn and I are supposed to be working on the public way discussion, and one well, we're not is we're not ready for anything at this point. But the other thing I just wanna point out is that that does interface with the conversation we had at town council the other day about the extending the temporary zoning bylaw, right? Article 14. And the fact that when we did that temporary zoning bylaw at the same time, we gave the town manager some additional permissions under our then current public way policy. And so that also needs to be extended. So that is in theory, a TSO issue as well. And so it sounded like Mandy Joe kind of, you know, had the organization behind that, like presenting article 14, which I know was part of the hearing, was a hearing, there was a hearing on last night and then also presenting the town council public way part of it. So um, I'm assuming she's talking to Lynn about that, but so what I'm saying is Lynn and I don't have a new proposal at this point for dealing with public way requests and how that's going to work. But the first part of it that might come up is this extension of the town manager's authority that is the, is the you know, the companion piece to the extension of the temporary zoning under article 14. So I guess we'll see if anything comes up at town council Monday, given that there will be a report on what happened associated with the hearing for uh, the temporary zoning of article 14 and that extension. And then because I, I, we did make clear, I thought at the last town council meeting that TSO would need to be able to look at that extension in order to make a recommendation to the town council. So I don't know what the timing's like on that because you know December again is the date on that. And we have limited town council time between now and then and not being part of agenda setting. I don't know where that fit in which actually leads me to a completely other question not to derail us from this is that I'm confused because somebody was asking me about surveillance technology and I said, well, we already did the facial recognition because like TSO is done with it, right? We made our recommendation to the town council. It's my understanding that's with GOL right now. Do we have any sense of where where that is in terms of the time frame, because this is starting to you know get confusing because we've got that and then we've got surveillance technology as a separate issue which is obviously going to take us some more time so do we know when the council's planning to act on facial recognition or do we not know that are you asking yes i'm asking do we know that i don't know it no 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 okay so I didn't forget something. <laughs> we don't know. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, we at least know what we're going to do at the next meeting, uh, at the meeting on the nineteenth. That is, um, and um, no, no. Next meeting is on the twelfth at right. five. Twelfth is is devoted yeah. only to the community safety work group appointments. Right. Um, uh, Surveillance, and surveillance technology and potential parking and parking hopefully and um we may have appointments i don't know what, what um, about may i ask about tack and the follow-up on tack i thought that was something we actually were going to do right, but right, I mean, right. you know, i'm just curious yeah. yeah the the um the chair uh asked to you know just um he asked for some time for them to come up with a, a charge, which they have done. They actually had a meeting today, which I attended 45 minutes of before this meeting. Um, so uh, that is, I think, their third meeting that they had, and they uh, circulated a proposed charge and a cover letter to the town manager and to um, Guilford and the rest of the committee to, to look at. And they, they, they just need some more time. There, they asked for more time. So in like a reasonable thing to ask for. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm expecting like maybe in two or three meetings, they'll be ready to come back and Talk to us. 
So, and is yeah. that also a possible retreat topic as part of that, you know, that survey that Lynn sent us in terms of committee's relationships to the council? Because TAC can sit and write its own charge all at once, but if the town manager doesn't want them to do that stuff, that that means they don't get to do it. So <laughs> um, one assumes that yes, it will it will follow a process, but we may also be having this broader conversation at a retreat, which may help inform our next TSO conversation about TAC. Sure. Um, so I would comment that on the October eighth meetings minutes. Um, oh, I just, I, 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 are you here? I just lost the picture. Yeah, here no, you are. Okay. We see you. Uh, okay, great. On the minutes of October 8th, there's a lot about what TAC has to do. And it, it doesn't say what happens afterwards, but uh, one of them is TAC has no clear body to advise at this moment, which is relating to something that Alyssa was saying. Um, then they're talking about road forms have to be up, out, updated. Um, and um, the need for a structured relationship between TAC and the town council. So this is all like unclear and uncharted. We don't know what it's to be and what they want it to be. Um, so it says Ryan suggested that uh, Hayden revise the TAC charge and wants to clarify what documents TAC uses in regards to transportation. And then there's this whole list of them in the minutes, including a street regulations document, which I think I want to get a copy of. Um, and then it says TAC is also working on a list of priorities for the committee can offer it to the town council as well. So not resolved at all in that is, is TAC, you know, related to uh, what is the relationship of TAC to TSO? And as Alyssa said, it's not just their decision or our decision. Um, there clearly were a lot of very cross signals given to us that suggested that somebody did not want TAC to continue. And so when um, Aaron Hayden came to us, he was busy making the case, we do a lot of things. But uh, I don't have a clear picture and I don't know if anyone here does, but whatever it is, they have to do some work. And then in some format, these issues should be resolved. I don't know, Alyssa, whether Alyssa has some idea of how they get resolved or? Alyssa? Is that a current hand? I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I think that we just, we let to some, like Darcy originally said, we let play out what they're, what they're attempting to do and their interaction with the town manager. So at least they're on the same page with the town manager, who's their appointing authority. And then the town manager says, well, that's interesting. Now it's time for you to talk to TSO again. And TSO, perhaps having had a conversation at the retreat about relationships with other committees, would be informed. Um, so it seems like we don't necessarily have a thing to do, but to see how their conversation with the town manager, meaning also what his perception is as to what he thinks, and then it comes back to us and potentially Paul's there, and we say, no, we think that's a completely wrong way of approaching it, or oh yeah, that sounds like a great way of approaching it. And then we go from there. But you know, tax been doing the work. So if they can figure out what they think makes sense, I mean, we're, we're happy to take their efforts, right? Yes, they're, they're, they're um, you know, they are populated by a whole group of experts in different areas. So, you know, seems like it makes sense to figure out how to work together with them. But anyway, um, so uh, I don't think we have anybody, no, no. How does it say eight participants? Yeah, I guess it is just eight participants. Um, no, no public comment, no items not anticipated. Um, and I think that's it for tonight. I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, all. Thank you. See y'all later. <laughs>